Vishwanath, I am not blaming the court. Then, then why you are arguing this aspect? I am saying that the represent. Shubhalos, that will be a very objective answer on my part, which will have nothing to do with the facts of the case. So I'll refrain from answering. Very well. If off the record, my life. Along with the contempt notices, then we'll hear it, this case. Please. Well, as the contempt notices have got, I will strongly object, my lords, to this. My lords may record my objection and dismiss my application. No, no, I am making this visit. I'll hear it with the, along with the contempt. My lords, I am, I am objecting to that. Ah. And number two, where we believe very strongly that bail is the rule and jail is not. Mm -hmm. Now, don't strike. Merit, but the yeah, the contempt. The merits, so I have not finished yet, sir. There is a lot which remains on merit. The main accused person in this case, Mustafaqeen, was granted bail by the Honorable Apex Court. Thereafter, I'll take my laws, I'll take my laws, just bear with me. Mustafaqeen was, bail applications were rejected by this Honorable Court. In fact, no bail applications were allowed. The co-accused persons and Mustafaqeen's. In the month of November, Mustaqeen's bail application came to be rejected on merits. Mustaqeen challenged that order before the Apex Court mm -hmm. and he got a favorable order from there. Now, Milaj, there were about three aspects which weighed with the Honorable Supreme Court while granting bail to Mustaqeen. Consideration number one was most certainly that Mustaqeen had served about one year in custody. And consideration number two was that all the other co-accused have been released on bail in the connected offenses. Mm -hmm. Now, Milaj, it is a parity on two, pi uh, on two parts. Mm -hmm. Now, after this order came, Milaj, every other co-accused person approached this Honorable Court and this Honorable Court was magnanimous enough to grant bails to Sohrab, Musa and Farman mm -hmm. on the ground that it is non-distinguishable from the case of the King. Mm -hmm. And allowing the doctrine of parity, my Lord granted bail, uh, bails to those persons. But Milaj, my submission would be that none had appeared for the applicant in this matter. So who stopped... Uh... Persons appearing for the applicant. That was out of the council's own volition, my lord. Sir? That was out of the council's own volition. Then the court is not to blame. How can court be based? Well, I am not blaming the court. Then, then why you are arguing this aspect? I am saying that the representation to the applicant was not there. Is it necessary that when case is listed, court should wait for the parties to appear and should wait that lawyers who are illegally striking and abstaining from work should be allowed to return back? Shmalos, that will be a very objective answer on my part, which will have nothing to do with the facts of the case, so I'll refrain from answering. Very well. If off the record, my lords, this two question, I would I would like to answer that. But what so worried the fact has already case. held that, that such calls by the Bar Council or the Bar Association are illegal. Then there is a division the bench issue. order of even our High Court which says that Milaj, lawyers going on strike does not amount to contempt. Yes. yes. There is a division bench of our High Court prior to the and new motor registration. So I had issued contempt notices. Yes. Yes, sir. I don't Whenever, know who was the counsel. You I was the counsel. Oh, you were the counsel. Whenever yes. those notices come to me, I'll so just reply. Let us list this case along with the contempt notices. Then we'll hear it, this case. Please. Well, as the contempt notices have got, I will strongly case. object, my lords, to this. My lords may record my objection and dismiss my application. No, no, I'm I am making this visit. I'll hear it with the, along with the contempt. My lords, I am, I am objecting to that. After I, I'll note your objection and then... My lords will first hear me. At least that much. Today the counsels are appearing. Today the counsels are not on strike. Merit, but those, yeah, the contempt you Merit, so I have not finished yet, sir. There is a lot which remains on merit. Now, my lords, once this application came to be decided by my lords, my lords only looked at the aspect of parity from one point of view as to whether the custody period is similar to that of Mustaqeen or not. Now, my lords, giving a finding, my lords said, after the notices of contempt were issued against me, my Lord said, this is the first bail application on behalf of the applicant Ch Ch Chakradar Sangipu in relation to crime number such and such, uh, register no parity. Ji. Now, Milaj, what I submit is that the Honorable Supreme Court had granted parity on two counts. Ji. The first count was that all other offense, all other accused persons in connected offenses Ji. have also been released on bail. Ji. Now, if my Lord will only permit me, I would like to just dig a little deep where that aspect of parity is concerned. Ji. Now, Milaj, when the Honorable Supreme Court says that all other co-accused person and the present applicant as well have been granted bail in connected offences. What would be the legal implication, my lords? Now, including the present applicant's case or including the instant case, there are four other matters pending against the present applicant as were pending against all the co-accused persons. Indeed. Those were Sohrab, Mustakin, Musa and Farman. They were taken into custody earlier in time. Now, well, it's in the instant case also, Sangepu was taken into custody later in time, but for all similar four offences. Now, well, it's in all those matters which are not this offence, Sangepu has already been granted bail. Now, if my lords, now, well, it's what I submit is that when we look at the operation of these orders, 
although bail has been granted, personal liberty in these matters of the present applicant stands secured. He will not be able to reap the benefits of those orders just because he is not being granted bail in this case, Malars. That I humbly submit, Malars, can never be the intention of the court. Similarly, Malars, what has weighed with the Honorable Supreme Court is exactly that. When the Supreme Court was faced with a situation that in all other connected matters, when all other co-accused persons and the present applicant has already been granted bail, then why will the present case only be that one case which does not allow him to be set at liberty? Now, Millet's coming to the doctrine of parity. Mm. Millet's the doctrine of parity, or I may humbly submit Millet's almost any doctrine, is of general application. Let me take another doctrine, Millet's, as an example that is falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. They say that it is mechanically not applicable in India. Now, that is a very general term, Millet's. The, whenever we talk about a doctrine, it is implied within the word doctrine itself that there is general application to it. Now, Millet's, the question which would arise before my lords is can a legal proposition which is of general application have a pedantic approach to the application. I millets would like to answer that question with a very unequivocal no. Because something which is of general application, something like the doctrine of parity, cannot take a very pedantic approach towards its application. Now, millets, here we have a case in which the nature of allegations against both parties, against all parties, in fact, are identical. And I would say that against Mustakin and Sangepu, they are almost identical because they are both arrayed as accused in the nature of conspirators. There is no direct evidence against Mustakin or uh, uh, Sangepu. Mustakin, at the point in time of the offense, was said to have been by the prosecution in Pratapgarh. Sangepu was said to be at the time of incidents at Andhra Pradesh. Yes. The persons committing the offense, all three gentlemen, all three accused persons have already been granted bail. Who the prosecution story was that they were present on the spot, in fact, stealing the cars. Yes. Now, what I very humbly submit, my lords, is the doctrine of parity, if it is just whittled down or just reduced to one simple point of factual distinguishment, well, that would go against the doctrine of parity, my lords. Yes. And especially in a jurisprudential system where we accept two things, my lords. Number one, that there is nothing more important and beyond personal liberty. And number two, where we believe very strongly that bail is the rule and jail is not. Mm -hmm. Now, when we take these principles in mind and we see the doctrine of parity, I believe, my lords, even my lords would concur with me to some extent, whether or whether or not it reduces itself to the order or not. But there will be a certain sense of concurrence that the doctrine of parity is to be applied with generally, and I would not say leniency, but with some amount of enforcement of this rule of bail is the rule and uh, the uh, uh, aspect of personal liberty. Right. Now, Milith, under these circumstances, I pray that the same arguments which were raised before the Honorable Supreme Court are still available. Mustakin and all Milith were taken into custody in the month of March 2000. Right. He is the mastermind of the entire story, Milith. First, the date of arrest is Milith. Uh, uh, 2010 of 22, Malur. Second, this does bias. Sir, I'm not a stage of two. I said, Teen number plate. This does say, Licky. Of the application, only this does say, Licky. Even if I'm a rest man with this, this does. This does is the date he was presented before the magistrate. Arrest memo is for the arrest and for the focus. The Fadi, this does bias. I'll just look up the gullet gate. In time number 26 of April. Ah, ah, please, sir. As per the arrest memo, so correct. Sir, you can the application for date. Okay, I'll correct. Okay, so there is 